In this video we're going to add the movement buttons to the game. So I'll open up Visual Studio and the first thing I'll do is remove the old button that we put in to add the experience. This one up here that we have for testing in the main window.xaml over where we have the player stats. I'll delete this line where we have the button and then I'll right click on main window.xaml and say view code and now I can delete this function button base on click. Now if we run the program, the button is gone. We're going to place the movement buttons in the lower right corner and we're going to split up this current grid that we have so that we have a large space here for on the left for the attack buttons once we get to those and the movement buttons will just be in this right corner. So I'll go into main window.xaml, find the label where we currently have the combat movement controls and replace this with a grid. I'll give it the same background color that we had for the label. And then delete the label. Now inside this grid, we're going to have one row with the two columns. So I'll add the grid row definitions and column definitions. I'll just paste those in. So now we have the one row. The left column is going to use as much space as it can. The right column is going to use 255 pixels because that's all we need for the movement buttons. Now inside the movement button area, I'm going to add another grid. And we're going to set this so that it has three rows and three columns, just so we can align the buttons for the movement a little bit nicer. So here we just say for the three rows, each one should use as much space as it can. And for the three columns, they should each use as much space as they can. That should keep them equal size. Now we'll add the buttons. And we do that by adding a button control. And I'll say this first one for north, the row is going to be zero. It's going to be at the top row. And the column is going to be one. So it's the middle column. And the content for that is going to be north. I'll just put my forward slash inside there since it's self-closing. Then we'll add another button control. This one on row one. And it's going to be in column zero, the left column. And this will be our west button. And I'll paste in the east and the south buttons. Now let's run this with F5 and see how it looks. And this is how the buttons look. They're taking up as much space as they can in the cell, the row and column. And I don't think this looks very nice. So I'm going to set some specific heights and widths for these. So all of our buttons are the same size, but we have a little bit of extra space. So I'll go back into the XAML and I'm going to add height equals 25 width equals 65 and margin equals 10. I'm going to add that line to each of the buttons so they all have the same size. Then save that and run the game. And I think that looks a little bit nicer. So now we have movement buttons on the screen. Now that we have the movement buttons on the screen, we need to make them actually do something. So I'll stop the program and in the XAML, I'll add a click attribute to each of these buttons. And this will tell the program what function to run when you click one of the buttons. I'll name this function on click move north. And then I'll add a click event for each of the other buttons on click 
move west. On click, move east. And on click, move south. Now, if you notice these, all these click methods are in red. That's because we're saying you need to run this function, but we don't have the function yet. So we need to add the function to the main window.xaml.cs. I'll right click on main window.xaml, say view code, and I'll create the first function for moving north. I'll make it a private function because it's only going to be used by the main window, so we don't need to make it visible to anything else. I'll say void because this function is not going to return any value. It's just going to do some action and that's it. And I'll put in the name on click move north. And this function has two parameters. The click event always sends these two parameters. So we need to say, have a, have a place to accept them, have a parameter for them. We don't need to use them in our function, but we need to accept them. And then I'll do an open curly brace and close curly brace. Now, if we go back to main window.xaml, we see that the one click move north is in blue because now it has a function that we can actually call. The function doesn't do anything yet, but the function is there. So let's go back to main window.xaml.cs and I'll create functions for the other click events. Now we've got to move north, move west, move east, and move south. And we need to make these functions actually do something. What they need to do is change the current location of the game session object. The one that kind of holds all of our state of the game. We could do that here in main window.xaml.cs, but we really don't want to put much logic or much code in here. We want to have most of that inside the view model or inside our models. So I'm going to create four functions inside game session to handle the movement. Let's open the game session class and I'm going to create a public function here because the game session class is inside the engine project, but we need to call it from the UI project. So we need to make it public. And this will also be a void function because it doesn't need to return any values. And I'm going to call this move north. And then I'll create one for east, west, and south. Now that I've created these four functions, we can have the main window.xaml.cs call them. So in the on click move north, we're going to say underscore game session dot move north. So when you click the north button, it will run this function. It will look at the current game session object, the one we created here, and it's going to call the move north function. The one we just created that doesn't do anything yet. And we need to add that for all the other directions. Okay. I've added the calls to the game session functions. So now we can go into the game session class and actually do some movement. For the locations, we're using X and Y coordinates. If you go to the West, we need to decrease your X value by one. If you go to the East, we need to increase it by one. If you go to the North, we're going to increase the Y value by one. And if you go to the South, we decrease the Y value by one. So let's say you're at the town square, which is zero, zero and you press the north button, then we're going to say, go to zero comma one, because we're at the same X coordinate, but we're increasing our Y coordinate by one. And once we get that location, we'll set the current location in the game session object to the new location. For the move north function, we'll do that first. We'll say current location equals current world dot location at, 
we'll use the same x coordinate as the current location. So current location dot x coordinate, comma current location dot y coordinate plus one. And what this will do is it will look at the current location, get its x coordinate, look at the current location, get its y coordinate, and add one to it. Call location at in the current world object and get the location at the new coordinate and put that into the current location property. And we'll do the same thing for the three other directions with slightly different changes depending which one we want to change and whether we want to increase it or decrease it by one. So I'll add those in now. Let's save all and run this and see what happens. So I start out at the town square, zero, zero, and I click the north button and it doesn't look like anything happens. When according to the map, we should be at the herbalist's hut. That's because we need to notify that the current location property has changed. Just like we needed to notify that the player experience changed when we had the button over here for adding experience. So let's stop the game. And now I need to make the game session class do the notify property changed. So we go up to the public class and we tell it colon I notify property changed because now we need the game session object to raise the property change notification. And if you notice, we need to have this using system dot component model in here and we're getting a red error message because we haven't added in the property change notification yet. So I'll go into the player class and grab the public event and the protected on property change function that we used. I'll just copy these, go back to game session and paste them in. So now we can actually implement the I notify property changed. Next, we need to have current location raise that event. And we'll do this just like we did with the player class. We'll create a backing variable for current location. And then in the setter, whenever the current location value changes, we'll raise the notify property changed message. We do that by saying private location. I'm going to name this underscore current location. And I'll change the property from this auto property to one where we get, I say return underscore current location. And for the set, I'll say underscore current location equals value, the value that gets passed into the setter. And then I'll raise the property change notification by saying on property changed and current location. So now when you click the button and we run any of these move functions and we put a new value into the current location property, this set will be called, we'll save it to the backing variable and we'll raise the notification. So let's try running the game now and see what happens. I click the north and now I'm at the herbalist hut. Click the south, back in the town square. So now we can actually move around in the game. However, we still have a problem. Here at the home location, we have all four direction buttons north, south, east, and west. But if we look at our map, from the player's home, you can only go north or west. And if you click the south button, we have a blank screen here. So you're at the location that doesn't exist. And if you click it again, you get an error because we're trying to grab the X and Y coordinates from the current location and there is no current location. 
So we need a way to prevent the user from moving to a location that doesn't exist. There are two ways we can handle this. One way is in these movement functions. Before we try to move them to a new location, we can check to make sure the location is not null, that there is a location there in the world. And we can also go into the UI and we can hide the buttons. So the only buttons that are visible are the ones with valid locations. Fortunately, XAML has the visibility attribute on controls. So if we go to the main window.xaml on the button, I can say visibility equals, and there's uh, collapsed, hidden, and visible as possible values. Collapsed means hide it, and then also don't take up the space that this would normally use. Hidden means use the space but hide the button and visible of course means visible but we can't just use these values directly because the player is going to move to different locations and from each location each one of these buttons may or may not be visible so we need to actually bind this to something that changes the way we're going to do that is by going into the game session class and adding some new boolean properties so I'll go into the game session class and I'm going to add four new properties. They're Boolean, so it's true or false, yes or no. One will be, is there a location to the north? One will be, is there a location to the east? One to the south and one to the west. And as we move, we'll reset those values based on what directions are available from the new location. So first let's create the properties. I'll make them public because our UI project is going to need to see them. The data type is bool, since it's a yes or no or a true or false value. And I'll say has location to north. For this property, we could use a getter and a setter, but we really only need to use a getter. And I'll show you how we can do that. I'll say get, and then in curly braces, I'm going to say return current world dot location at current location dot x coordinate comma current location dot y coordinate plus one then I'm going to say exclamation equals null so what this will do is it will look in the current world it will try to get the location at the current location's x coordinate and the current location's y coordinate plus one so that would be the location to the north and then it's going to see if it's not equal to null so if the world has a location at these coordinates this location at function returns a location and this is not null if the current world does not have a location at these coordinates it's going to return null, so this whole equation would evaluate as false. So when we have a location to the north, this is true. When we don't have a location to the north, this is false. And this property will have true or false based off of this calculation. Now I'll add the properties for the other directions. So now we have a Boolean property has a location to the north that checks the coordinates to the north has location to the east that checks to the east and then has location to the south and to the west. So now we have the ability to ask the game session object from the current location, is there a valid location in each of the four directions? Now we need to go back to the main window.xaml and set the visibility for these buttons based on those property values. But we need to convert from a Boolean property to a visible or hidden value. And there's a built-in function for that. If we scroll up to the top of main window.xaml, after this opening window tag and before the grid, I'll add in window.resources and we have the Boolean to visibility converter. And then I give it a name here, Boolean to visibility. This is a built-in function that will look at a Boolean value. And if it's true, it will say visible. 
and if it's false it will say hidden. That's what we'll use to hide or to show the buttons. So if we scroll back down to the buttons, I'll set the visibility property for the first button. And we're going to do an open curly brace and binding so we can bind it to the property. And we want to bind it to has location to north. And then put a comma and we'll say converter equals open curly brace, static resource, space, boolean to visibility. Now when the button is drawn, to determine if the button is visible or not, the program will look at the has location to north property and it will convert it using the boolean to visibility and fill this whole string in with either visible if has location in north is true or hidden if has location in north is false. And we'll have to add this visibility attribute for the three other buttons. So I'll do that now. Now we have the binding for the visibility set for each of the four buttons to the appropriate property, location in north, west, east, or south. Let's run this and see what happens. And we can see right away, if we go to the south, to our house, we still have the south button visible. And we don't have any locations to the south. That's because we also need to notify that the has location properties have changed. So we'll go back into game session. And if you notice, we only have a get here on the has location properties. Here in the current location, we raise the property changed on the set, but we don't have a setter for these. However, these has location properties change when the current location property changes. So we can kind of sneak in here on the current location setter and add on property changed has location to north and for the other directions. So now when the current location changes, we'll reset the current location, we'll raise the property changed event for the current location so we can redraw the image and the location name, and we'll also raise property changed event for these Boolean values, which should hide or show our direction buttons based on whether or not there is a location in that direction. So let's run this again, and now if I go south, to my home, the east and the south buttons are hidden, which is what we expect. From the player's home, you can only go north or west. If I go west, I'm at the farmer's house, and now I can go back east, or go west again, and I'm in, and I'm in the farmer's field, and now the only direction is east, which is what we have on our map. So it looks like this is working. So now we can actually move around in our game world. It took a few steps to get to this point, so I'll do a quick overview. In the XAML file, we created our button controls. We set up the click event for each button to have an event handler, which is a function in the main window.xaml.cs. These button click handlers call some new functions in our game session class, which actually handle moving the player to a new location. When the player moves to a new location, we raise a property change notification that the current location has changed, and we also raise notifications that these four new has location properties have changed. And going back to the XAML, those has location properties, we use those to make the button visible or hidden depending on whether there is a location in that direction or not. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to the support page on my website, which will go over all the steps and in written instructions in case that's a little bit easier for you. And it will also have the updated source code. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment on that support page, 
or you can leave a comment below. Thanks 